Hello, everyone, and welcome to Quest, a journey into true crime and the paranormal. My name is Misty Gaither. I am your host, and I'm so excited with uh, that I'm going to have with me Joshua Purvis. How you doing? Hey, how are you? I'm doing great. And for those of you who I'm sure already know, he is uh, with the Searchers Group. And also, y'all have started a channel called Beacon TV. That's correct. I'm a subscriber now, so there you oh, go. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope you've been enjoying it. Yeah, we've been, uh, started out as kind of a soft launch, but we've been dripping content on there. And, and for 2025, we have a full slate. I think looking into even October of this year, you're going to see a lot more content coming. Well, I'm really excited for y'all because I know it's a lot of hard work. I know what goes into our podcast, and I'm sure like a channel is even like maybe quadrupled. It just becomes a little bit bigger than just ourselves, just the searchers. It's about keeping the viewers in mind first and foremost, and then the next up, keeping any of the creators that we're working with in mind as well as we create these things and help develop these ideas and try and turn some things into realities for some of these people. Uh, I love seeing a idea come to fruition uh, as well, but but also it's a learning experience for us. And y'all have a uh, some real good shows on. You know, you have uh, well, Rich- I appreciate it. Yeah, you have Rochelle. That's what with Brian Murray and yeah. uh, Rochelle uh, Stratton. And then you have the sidekicks, Michael. <laughs> uh, uh, Gallia, That's right. Right. And then uh, Mary Bast. And we, I believe, I met you and also uh, the sidekicks at uh, yeah. at uh, Cajun Country Paracon. That's right. Yep. And I yep. will be out there at Cajun Country Paracon for next year as well. I'll, I, I, will, I will be out there. Shane, unfortunately, will not be able to make that one because he has another event out in uh, Virginia City, Nevada. But we're going to divide and conquer. That's what you have to do. And, and That's you know, right. Yeah, you got to strike while the iron's hot, like I always right. say. So uh, Brandon and I will be back uh, to uh, next year, and, and we're looking forward to it. So let's uh, go back to about 10 years ago. Were you already friends with Shane, or did you just meet 10 years yeah, then? Yeah, so Sh- Shane yeah. and I have... At this point, I would say that we've probably been friends for a decade or so or more. You know, it kind of gets a little blurry at that 10 year mark. I sure. think life moves very fast for him and I both. So, <laughs> but uh, we would always talk shop about uh, paranormal investigating. And at that time, too, I was actually kind of getting my teeth cut in the uh, film industry as well. Uh, you know, picking up a camera and just going out and having fun, taking videos. And I enjoyed filming paranormal content at that point. But I, I also, I was a whitewater kayaker way back when, and I would film that stuff as well. Uh, sold some of that stuff to the Travel Channel at that time. And I, I don't know, you kind of just get a, I get a good appreciation for editing, you know, my experiences and for someone to, you know, kind of see and maybe appreciate themselves. Fast forward to now, Shane made his way onto the Holzer files and we would talk about that and lots of congratulatory stuff going on there. And then into the second season of the Holzer files and coincidentally also why we have such a good connection with Louisiana and why the people that we meet there and know there end up being like family to us is Shane and I went out and did an event out there for Shane at the time, actually. And he asked me to come out because I have a pretty big background and um running like paranormal events. I went out to the Gothic hanging jail actually in DeRitter, Louisiana with them. Mm-hmm. And we had, we had such a good time investigating and doing all that stuff. Uh, and he had to fly out to film the first episode of the second season of the Holzer files directly after that. But on his flight out there, we decided that we needed to pick up the searchers idea and actually stick with it and let, let's do it, you know? And that was actually kind of the people don't know this, but the Gothic hanging gel and that event was kind of the birthplace of, uh, searchers putting its feet on the ground and going, you know, it, it, before then it was an idea and it's an idea that Shane and I had always wanted to do. But at that point was when we kind of just held ourselves accountable to doing it. We've been doing it ever since. And I I would say that's probably at this point, that's probably four years ago or so, four or five years. But yeah, we haven't stopped since and we've been uh, super busy doing it. But yeah, to that to that point, that's why uh, Louisiana has had such a so been, you know, it's been near and dear to our hearts. And we've since done other events over at the Gothic Hanging Jail just because of that. 
you know, Louisiana, of course, it has a, a great place in my heart, too. And it's, you know, it's so, you know, we talk about the food and we talk about, you know, some of like the culture and stuff that right. Louisiana has. And, and, of course, we have a lot of hauntings and it's just a, like a gumbo of everything. And it's a, oh, such absolutely. a wonderful state. And especially here in New Orleans, you know, I don't know if y'all get this way a lot. Yeah, yeah, but, absolutely. Yeah. I always say that this is the Mecca you know, yeah. and, oh, and, yeah, of uh, course. Of and I course. just really think that that's cool how that, you know, that y'all kind of came to get, you know, like as a, a team and kind of, it was birthed here. And so, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, uh, you know, people yeah. will really, yeah, they'll never really realize how, how close to our hearts, Louisiana is. And, you know, meeting Marlena out at the Gothic hanging gel, you know, we've become great, great friends with her since we love her to death. And that's kind of where we learned about LA spirits as well. And then, fast forward and we helped Marcy. We came out and did a fundraiser for Marcy and became great friends with her as well. That's how we became friends with the owners of the steamboat in. Oh, yeah. And it just kind of, yeah. it just kind of has grown out of those relationships, but er every one of those relationships are very special to us. Let's talk about, you know, how you were saying that whitewater rafting and all that. Yeah, so yeah, okay. I would say that that would be that you like are, you know, into adventure and, and chasing yes, like yes. kind of that natural high or whatever. And and so is that one of the things that kind of attracted you to ghost hunting was? I would say absolutely. Yeah. I would say that that attracted me first into ghost hunting. So I've, I've been into rock climbing. I've been into whitewater kayaking. I, I'm a man that has done a lot of things in the short amount of time that he has been on this earth. <laughs> I could, you know, write a novel. I was a firefighter at one point. Oh, wow. um, I think to, to what you're saying is there's a certain amount of uh, adventure tied to all of those things. Right. And that is what got me at least interested in going and doing a paranormal in investigation. Now, what has kept me here was the first time I found my own paranormal evidence, which actually just happened by happenstance. I wasn't even on an investigation when it, when it happened. I was taking a tour of a house in Savannah, Georgia, actually, during the day. Once you kind of get, and I always tell people that go out and, you know, take part in our events and maybe have not had that experience yet. Once you have that first experience, you'll never forget it. And you'll want to continue doing it because I think it's human nature to want to try and solve the unsolvable. You know, I was all in once I had my first paranormal experience. It was at the Sorrel Weed House in Savannah, Georgia. And then as I progressed in my in my investigating and meeting all these different people that had their own personal experiences and wanted help on the matter. And the filmmaking aspect kind of took a more front and center approach for me because it wasn't, it became not enough for me to just experience it for myself, but for people that maybe can't go out there and investigate themselves, maybe they could live vicariously through seeing our experiences on camera. Right. And if we do a good job of telling the story and filming it, maybe they can get, you know, a hint of that, that feeling too. So. And you know what, that's a really great way to look at it, you know, because not yeah. everybody can, uh, you know, get to go. Well, like y'all are, y'all will be going, right. I think next year, like to Romania or, or wherever. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. And you know, just anywhere, you, you know, I hear places, you know, that I haven't even got to be, but when I, but absolutely. you're right. But when you watch these shows and you, and you go to the Paracons or you meet uh, people in the industry, you're right. W you, you live through them and, and you get to, you may not get to be there on site, but but you're right. you're there in a way and it's it's just really great how to share all of that with so many people the idea of searchers really de derived from the idea that everybody is on a personal journey and on a search of their own if you if you will and and that can mean a different a lot of different things for a lot of different people right i think we can all agree that we're trying to find something more than our nine to five jobs and something more than just the cookie cutter things that we are taught are important. And because of that, not every, you know, not everybody is even physically capable of going out and investigating. And so for Shane and I, while on one hand, they get to live vicariously through us through like a filmmaking standpoint, we live vicariously through them whenever they come out and investigate with us. We go to locations and it might be our 10th or 11th time they're investigating. For a lot of those people, it's their first time and it, it may change their life just having a good time and a good experience there.
And so we want to make sure that we cultivate those relationships and we appreciate the people that appreciate us. You know, that that right there means the world to us. And so even like launching Beacon TV, that remained paramount in doing that as well, right? If we were going to launch it, we wanted it to be we wanted it to be really good because as people that support us and the viewers and, you know, 499, we know that everybody struggles financially. We struggle financially. We wanted to keep it at a price point that's going to be low, but we wanted to serve content that was going to be high value and at least make sure that we could build a community and a platform that will hopefully leave a legacy for people and one that people can count on to see their favorite shows so all of that stuff matters to us because honestly we wouldn't have had half the opportunities that we do if it wasn't for the people around us and when you give and and, you know you and Shane both I mean y'all give a lot of your time you give a lot of your talents and stuff to shine the paranormal community in a positive light that just and good things come back to those who do good (laughs) things I mean sometimes it may take a little while or whatever not always on our time but it does happen and so you know I know that that things are ramping up for y'all and and have been but I really believe that even more that there's going to be some other great things coming y'all's way now do you still um do tours or yeah yeah yeah, so absolutely we've only managed this past year to do one searchers event i mean those are kind of for shane and i are kind of like our personal tours if you would and we did not get to do one at the gothic jail in deritter this year hopefully we can make that happen for next year we did one out in chambersburg pennsylvania this year hopefully next year we can do more of those but they tend to be a little bit more Intimate, if you will, we only sell maybe, you know, 15 to 20 tickets to those. And we try to do two day events. That way there will be plenty of opportunity. If you can't come Friday, you can come Saturday. And if you want to come both days, you can come both both days. You know, we like to kind of hang out, fellowship, do some investigating, kind of try to appreciate everybody's company. I do walking tours on occasion here in my local city, Macon, Georgia. Uh, I actually set up one of the first paranormal walking tours here. I handed it off to a tour company to keep doing it because I got so busy with searchers and traveling the country and stuff of that nature. And it is still going today as well. So I'd like to think eventually I'll I'll be able to come back out with those guys and maybe do a couple of walking tours for them too. It's like in Georgia. I mean, we all, we hear all the time about Savannah, you know, it's one of the most haunted cities. It definitely is. So Macon, what is, their claim to yeah, fame so, for the paranormal. Yeah, so there are a lot of uh, similar occurrences in Macon that you would have seen in the in Savannah as well, right? A lot of sickness, a lot of death. Civil War is very, very busy here in, in Georgia as a state. Macon is a city that's kind of interesting where they don't want, really want to lean into the idea of things being paranormal. But at the same time, it's just a matter of fact for a lot of a lot of the locations in in our historic district they are starting to uh, come around to it and i think the start of that was you know the city of macon uh, was the one they actually reached out to uh, me and my wife about designing that walking tour for them so we did it and we ran it for a couple of years and like i said i eventually got so busy i was like all right i think it's time for us to like pass the torch we've given you guys all the tools to to, to walk this tour, you know, you know, the stories and they do it today. So I do hope that they will start shining a bit more of a light. Macon, Georgia is the birthplace of a lot of Southern rock music. You know, that's, this is where the Allman brothers are. This is where, uh, Otis Redding, his family still lives here to this day. Wow. But with all of that, um, we've had one of the first female serial killers lived and own a restaurant in the in downtown Macon, and Jet Lyles. I was so, about to say and Jet Lyles, yes. Yep. <laughs> that's right. Uh we had uh Chester Burge and you know, from Whisper to the Black Candle. Uh he was he was a very prominent Macon figure, <laughs> did a lot of really bad things. There's a couple of axe murders that left were left unsolved that are not too far outside of the downtown district so there's plenty and plenty of stuff to go from we have haunted theaters we have a haunted used to be a pharmacy now it's a floral business paranormal is alive and well and well in macon georgia that's really cool and it was called is the name of it hard rock candy tours or is it like yeah so it's called rock candy tours Uh and it's it's funny because it's called that because it's a husband and wife owned uh company 
uh, the wife is actually the daughter of the one of the owners of what is called Capricorn Records. And for people that don't know what Capricorn Records is, is it is kind of the birthplace of where uh, the Allman Brothers got their start. It has uh, Charlie Daniels was there. The Eagles, I'm trying to, Leonard Skinner played a part in it wow, as well. So, a lot of so if you go into like Memphis, Tennessee, you have Sun, um, what is it, Sun Records? Yes. Well, this is, it would be the Southern equivalent of that right so and, and it was actually made by otis redding at the time otis redding passed before it came to fruition and then the guys bought it and turned it into capricorn records and it actually became a, a staple it caught on fire way back when and the university here mercer university actually rebuilt some of the rooms and one of the studios it remains how it was since the day that it was made so yeah, I mean, it is very part. It is a very important part of music history, and it sits right smack in the middle of downtown. You know, and it was built because Otis Redding thought that people needed somewhere to go other than uh, Mobile, Mobile, Alabama, or Memphis, Tennessee. Right. And so they, <laughs> at the time, that's that's why he built the studio there. So I, I say all of that because yeah, the wife is uh is lineage from that from that uh family that owned Capricorn Records. And then the husband, his family owns what's called uh, Crown Candy. I think it's called Crown Candy. Yeah. So they say Rock Candy Tours. Uh, the tour used to be called the Macon Macabre Tour. And, okay. But Rock Candy is the one that ran, ran it. Now, let me ask you something. I bet I can tell you one of your favorite movies, or at least your wife's, one of y'all's favorite movies. All right. Let's try Let's it. Let's see. It. I don't know. If I get it wrong, I'll owe you a drink when you come down. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> it's a Wonderful Life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, that would be my wife, 100%. She loves It's a Wonderful Life. I got the opportunity to actually take her to, um, they have a festival for It's a Wonderful Life. Do and they? believe it, it's up in New York, uh, the city name. Bedford it's, Falls? It's, or no, it's not. Bad. It's actually not, but it, mm -hmm. it it's where they kind of created the set, Bedford Falls, right? To any degree, it's out near Buffalo. Okay. It's not too far from there, Rochester area. I got the opportunity to take her out there. Believe it or not, a lot of the actors are still alive and well today, and what? they were there at the at the thing. So it was it was you know I think it meant a lot to her. It is her all time favorite movie. She watches it every year for Christmas. We have four dogs, and every dog has a name based off of that movie. <laughs> Well, I saw that George Bailey Purvis has yep. his own Facebook page. And so oh, yeah. what are what are some of the other names of Yeah, so George Bailey, he's our uh he's our oldest dog. He's thirteen years old. Uh a lot of people that know me now know George Bailey because he is one of the few that will travel around with us from time to time. Everybody's come to love George Bailey. The next one up would be Tallulah Claire. She's a basset hound. <laughs> yeah. Uh from Clarence the Angel. Right. Uh, the next one up would be Zuzu. Yeah. And then the next the one pedals, up. The pedals, the pedals. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The next one up is going to be uh, Harry Potter. Oh, so. what? Nothing wrong with that. Just switching from It's a Wonderful Life to Harry Potter. So there yeah, you go. Yeah, so it's a, you know, that one's got a little bit of a uh, Harry in the It's oh, a Wonderful yeah, Life. the brother. But, uh, yeah. Yep, that's yeah. right. That's right. But uh, it also means she is a huge Harry Potter fan as well. But yeah, I thought that was cute because I did notice that George Bailey had his own Facebook page. George Bailey means a lot to us. We got him maybe two weeks or so after we were married. So he's been with us our whole life together, basically. He is the culmination of every memory we've had, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah, ain't nothing like him at all. That's right. Now, you've probably investigated just about everywhere all over uh you know <laughs> I, I have investigated quite a few places there's yeah. still plenty out there for me to go through though so where would be some place you haven't investigated but you would really like to one of those places is the paris catacombs i okay. would really love to check that out i would really like to and i will hopefully get the chance there is a haunted forest in in romania that i should hopefully get the chance to investigate while we're out there so now you'll be Dol going um i'm sorry you'll be going uh, next year to romania you and shane is that with maria right. the, the mysterious yes, adventures yeah, with mysterious yeah. adventure yeah. tours yeah. yeah she uh yeah she called us on the phone uh, maybe a, I don't know, two months ago now and 
started talking about that. And of course, Shane and I are like, what, what is this life? We're about to go. Yeah, that's pretty badass. You know, check out. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> cool. You know, looking forward to having a good time there. I mean, y'all definitely will, because I had Maria on the show and she seems like that she would be just oh, fun great. to hang out with and, yeah, and a good great. time. Yeah. Is there someone, you know, we all have, I don't know, our heroes or people that we admire or something. Is there anybody that maybe that you've admired that's been in this field? You know, because, you know, we had like Hans Holzer, the Warrens, right. you know, um, just different ones that kind of, you know, kind of set the bar, I guess, or kind of made a foundation for us to to kind of follow after or, or plot our own ways. Now, do you have anybody that you're just like, well, well they're just amazing and you know or are you kind of glean from them or are you just do your own thing yeah, i guess make two points on that holzer for sure him and the warrens you know they're them coming up out of out of the the u.s they kind of really brought paranormal investigating into the light a, a bit more they went through hundreds and hundreds of cases but you know somebody that is alive and well today still that still does investigating that I do for lack of better words admire in the paranormal space and admire as a person is John Tenney he has lived and if you you know if you ever get the chance to to meet him or the opportunity to hear him and he could you know maybe talk about a percent of his life but he has lived a very interesting life and has an, investigated a lot of really interesting things and He's an excellent storyteller at that. I've seen him on a few things, and if I'm not mistaken, yeah. and I may be wrong, you know, like he had some health problems or something, or or like yeah. just they had like kind of the maybe a near death experience or something right. that that happened to him, and so he actually took that and kind of yeah, you know, so and, and is, to me he... gives you the kind of the leg up <laughs> in a way, you know, right? Yeah, but, of but he has yeah. really taken that and really turned it into like an educational teaching, um, you know, thing. So I think that's really yes. cool. I mean, he's he's a you know, I've I've had the opportunity to work with him at several events in my in in my past, and he's always been a really down to earth person, really good guy. I, I mean, again, he he's one of those people that really. The stories he tells just sound completely unbelievable, but are largely true. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, I really in, enjoyed researching about you and, you know, and even you were talking about your first, you know, the experience you had when you took the picture and, and yeah, that kind of yeah, like yeah. solidified things for you. Maybe that there is like, did you come from like a religious background or you just kind of like maybe not? Or Well, you know, I, I would say anybody that's come from South Georgia and that's where most of my family is, it's from, and you know, as, has come from, we call it Southern Baptist down here. Mm -hmm. uh, so I did come from that in, in my life, but uh, that's not really what I wouldn't say religion has ever kept me from being curious about any of it. Right. And as I investigate more and learn more, but the reason I liked the, the evidence that I, from Sorrel weed and, and the picture that I caught is because it was, it wasn't provoked. Right. It was just happenstance. And I was actually getting gas and my wife was going through the photos on my phone and she's the one that found it originally. It kind of left me, I guess, wanting more. And then even, you know, way back then we were, me and my wife as a pastime would watch the show Ghost Hunters, of course. Sure. You know, to have the ability to go on a real investigation. So mix that with the the paranormal evidence that I caught for myself, unintentional. It, it really drove home the investigation portion of that. It only took once. <laughs> right. And I, I was hooked. You was so. hooked. So, That's right. Yeah. So, you know, I really appreciate you being on the show. I know you're busy Absolutely. And, and, you know, it, I really enjoyed speaking with you and I really wish you so much success, you and Shane and your, you know, the, the channel and, and just, well, we appreciate it. So I really do appreciate it and, and tell George Bailey, I said, hello. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Will right. do. So thank you All so right. much. And I'll talk to thank you later. You, Missy. Thank All you. Right. Bye.